Sales gurus talk about objection handling, but if you don't learn how to prevent objections from coming up in the first place, like I'm going to share with you, then it's the reason that you're not closing sales and you're going to continue to get people who just want to think about it. Now, in fact, there are three reasons why you're not closing as many sales as you should be. One, it's a mindset shift you need to adopt. And two, a method for getting the truth on the table. And three, you're missing key answers by not asking your questions in a different way. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to fix all three of those things, because the sooner you fix those things, the sooner you're going to get no objections and close more calls, and you'll be able to hit your sales targets and top the leaderboard fast. In fact, last year, I helped a client go from zero to 1.4 million, where before he was going to throw in the towel and go do something else. If you want results like that, then you need to make sure you're implementing these changes. But first, I need you to smash that subscribe button. I literally upload a video on this platform every single week, and you don't want to miss it. So please smash that subscribe button. Also, go to the link in the pinned comment below. I have a free real sales call example where I overcome multiple objections. There was a think about it objection. There was a money objection. There was a partner objection. There was a guarantee objection. If you want to see how you can do this for yourself, then go to the pinned comment below and get into that right now. Okay, first, the mindset shift that you have to adopt is a philosophy. There's really three sub shifts that you need to make to ensure that you're probing and clarifying as deeply as you can. The first thing being you need to relax and just allow yourself to be able to have a normal conversation. When you allow yourself to just be present, this allows you to be able to actively listen better. Actively listen is where you are engaged in what the other person is saying and you're able to tell when and where you're able to ask a clarifying question. One of the ways that I do this that's a little controversial is I don't take any notes while I'm on the call. I actually haven't taken any notes on a sales call in the last year. And actually, it's freed me up because I no longer am tied to the pen and having to write down every single thing that the person is saying. I used to write bios, believe me. I used to be very proud of all of the books, all of the journals that I would have where these were the prospects and I know their whole life story, but it didn't help me close because I wasn't able to be fully present in the call. The second sub shift that you need to make, strike while the iron's hot. Ask a probing or clarifying question exactly when it makes sense to ask it. Don't wait, because if you wait, you will have to explain the context behind why you're asking when you could have just used the momentum of the moment to explain the reason for the question. Too many times I've seen sales calls go longer than they should be or not deep enough because the person didn't actually ask the question at the moment when the clarifying question would have made sense to ask. Third sub shift in your mindset is don't be a passenger in your own sales call. From the very moment that the call starts, they need to feel like you know what you're doing. Doing. There's two frames that will help you here, the doctor frame and the leadership frame, both of which allow you to be able to ask questions without you feeling awkward for doing so. This allows you to be able to ask questions and dig deeper when surface level answers are given. The second reason why you're not closing as many deals as you could be is because you're not getting the truth on the table. And there's a proven formula that I've created called the QT formula, the C-U-T-I-E. This is your ability to be able to clarify and probe and dig deep so that you can get people to actually give you answers to questions that they wouldn't have necessarily given you on their own. Sometimes people will say, well, the person didn't really come to the call really thinking that they had a problem. This is where your ability to be able to ask those relevant questions will unearth these problems that they might not have even been aware of that they have. So your ability to be able to ask these questions is going to be directly linked to your value to them. The more valuable you are, the more you're able to ask those questions. I created this acronym because it's super easy to remember. So let's go through it. C stands for clarifying your uncertainty. The definition of uncertainty is lack of sureness about something or someone. So if there's an answer that they give you and you're not clear about what it actually means, then ask them to clarify. What do you mean by that? How so? Can you tell me a little bit more? Can you elaborate? These will help you to be able to get even deeper. The T stands for time frame probe. You want to figure out how long this has been going on for. And then the last part of it is the impact effect question. What kind of an impact has this had on you? What kind of effect is this having on you or your family? So here's an example. It's just too much. Too much? Yeah. My wife can't take it any longer. How long has this been going on for? For the past year now. Okay. And how's that affecting your family overall? Man, uh, it's just, 
I'm just not getting home um, before 11 o'clock at night so I can be able to tuck my kids into bed. If you just repeat the QD example over and over and over, whenever it makes sense, then you'll be able to effectively find and uncover the truth, which is where the real sales are made. It separates the amateur salesperson versus the sales professional. And the sales professional will make more money because they were able to unearth the actual truth of the matter. So remember the cutie formula, because if you don't, you're gonna be like many of the people who miss a step and then they end up getting to the end of the call and the person needs to think about it. Whereas if you just probed and clarified a little bit deeper, you might've uncovered more relevant information that would have allowed you to be able to have leverage over that person because they would have told you the actual truth of the matter. Instead, if you didn't go deep enough, then you're really just dancing on the clouds and you cannot afford to just dance on the clouds. One thing that I do want to mention is that when you do ask these deeper questions, it actually creates more trust and connection with your prospect because only somebody who is intently listening and asking the relevant questions and going deeper is going to be the person that's actually listening to them and is actually on their side. Don't underestimate the power of you being able to ask them questions that help them feel heard and understood. The third reason why you're getting think about it objections is because you're not practicing the art of looping. Sometimes people won't give you the answer that you're looking for the first time. So you need to be able to ask the question in a different way. The key here is to maintain your patience and composure while asking the question in a different way. By doing this, you could also explain, hey, look, I'm just trying to be able to help so I could fully understand if or how we could be able to help you. Also, if somebody isn't willing to give you the answers that you're looking for, let's say that it's the very first question, which is what is the actual problem? If somebody's not willing to tell you what the actual problem is, then you actually don't have a sales call. And in fact, I would say it would be best to just end the call early and save yourself the 45 minutes to an hour because anything after that is just going to be two people having a conversation. It's not going to be a full sales call unless the person admits that they actually have a problem. And if you're going to write those checks, you need to be willing to cash them. People will respect you more when you're able to hold your boundaries up and you'll be able to respect their time by respecting yours. When you make these three changes, you're going to be able to enter into the end of the call with the best footing in place. You're going to be able to have the leverage that you need to be able to properly objection handle because you will not be able to properly objection handle if you don't actually have the truth on the table, if they haven't actually told you what the problem is, if they haven't actually gone deep enough to figure out what is their cost of an action? What happens if they do nothing? And you have to remember that people don't want to go deep. But part of the reason why you get paid what you do is because you're able to get in there, ask those uncomfortable questions and to be able to serve the person to the highest degree, because this is what it's all about. At the end of the day, it's about having powerful conversations with people who want to move their life forward. Now, if you want to get some hands-on coaching to help you implement these things, then I have a special opportunity where I'm going to review your your calls, optimize your script, and give you specific feedback so you can make the fastest change to close more deals and make more money. If that sounds interesting, then keep watching this video. This opportunity is time sensitive as of the date of this published video, and there's two things holding you back right now. The first one is that you haven't implemented everything that I've shared with you in this video. And the second is that you haven't joined the waitlist for my new program, The Salesmanship, which is literally designed to help you make more sales, prevent more objections, and stack more cash. When you join the waitlist, you'll be the first to hear how to join our first cadre, the Gold Crew. I want to keep these groups small and intimate, so I'll only be accepting six people max. If you'd like my specific help with your sales, then please go to the link in the description below and sign up right now. Because if you're still watching this video, I'm going to guess that you're above average. So the odds of you closing more deals and having less objections is probably quite high. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to be able to get actual help from a seasoned sales rep who's taken over 4,000 calls and generated millions in revenue instead of being handed off to somebody who's not the actual face of the business. I can't guarantee that I'm not going to have that eventually. But right now, this is the only time that you're going to be able to get me helping you with your sales. If you're not interested in that, then please watch the next two videos I put up on the screen because they're the videos YouTube thinks you should watch next. Savvy.